ਹੈਲੋ ਗਾਇਸ ਅਸੀਂ ਫਾਇਲ ਸ਼ਰਮਾ ਟੂਡੇ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਪਾਰਥੈਨੋਜੈਨੇਸਿਸ ਸੋ ਲੈਟਸ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਪਾਰਥੈਨੋਜੈਨੇਸਿਸ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਪਾਰਥੈਨੋਜੈਨੇਸਿਸ ਪਾਰਥੈਨੋਜੈਨੇਸਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਨੇਚੁਰਲ ਫਾਰਮ ਆਫ ਐਸੈਕਸ਼ੁਅਲ ਰੀਪ੍ਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਇਨ ਵਿਚ ਗਰੋਥ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਮੈਂਟ ਆਫ ਐਨ ਐਮਬ੍ਰਿਓ ਅਕਰਸ ਵਿਦਆਊਟ ਫਰਟੀਲਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਾਈ ਸਪਰਮ ਇਨ ਐਨੀਮਲਸ ਪਾਰਥੈਨੋਜੈਨੇਸਿਸ ਮੀਨ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਮੈਂਟ ਆਫ ਐਨ ਐਮਬ੍ਰਿਓ ਫਰਮ ਅਨਫਰਟੀਲਾਈਜ਼ ਐਗ ਸੈਲ and in plants parthenogenesis is a component process of apomixis now the occurrence of parthenogenesis parthenogenesis occurs naturally in some plants some invertebrates animals species including nematodes some butterflies aphids some mites some bees and some parasitic wasps and a few vertebrates such as some fish amphibians reptiles and very rarely birds this type of reproduction has been induced artificially in a few species including fish and amphibians now the history of parthenogenesis parthenogenesis was first recognized in 1745 by charles bonnet jacques loeb stimulated parthenogenesis in sea urchin and frog eggs by artificially mean in 19 g pinkus in 1936 artificially produced the first non parthenogenetic offspring in mammals in rabbit normal egg cells form in the process of meiosis and are haploid with a half as many chromosomes as their mother's body cells haploid individuals however are usually non viable and parthenogenetic offspring usually have the diploid chromosome number depending on the mechanism involved in restoring the diploid number of chromosomes parthenogenetic offspring may have any pair between all and half of the mother's alleles the offspring having all of the mother's genetic material are called full clones and those having only half are called half clones full clones are usually formed without meiosis if meiosis occurs the offspring will get only a fraction of the mother's alleles since crossing over of dna tag palace during meiosis create variation now the types of parthenogenesis there are two types of parthenogenesis first is natural parthenogenesis and second is artificial parthenogenesis natural parthenogenesis may be of two types first is complete or obligate parthenogenesis and second is incomplete or cyclic parthenogenesis now first i would like to discuss about natural parthenogenesis in certain animals the parthenogenesis occurs regularly constantly and naturally in their life cycles and is known as the natural parthenogenesis the natural parthenogenesis may be of two types first is complete and second is incomplete parthenogenesis first i would like to discuss about complete parthenogenesis certain insects have no sexual phase and no males and they depends exclusively on the parthenogenesis for the self reproduction this type of parthenogenesis is known as the complete parthenogenesis or obligatory parthenogenesis now the first example of complete parthenogenesis is rotifers in rotifers females produce exclusively by parthenogenesis in monogonet rotifers females can alternate between sexual and asexual reproduction now The second example of complete parthenogenesis is Caucasian rock lizard. This lizard from Caucasian region of Soviet Union reproduces only by parthenogenesis, always producing females by this process. There is no male at all. Now, the second type of natural parthenogenesis is incomplete parthenogenesis. The life cycle of certain insects includes two generations. first is sexual generation and second is parthenogenetic generation both of which alternate to each other in such cases the diploid eggs produce females and the unfertilized egg produce males this type of parthenogenesis 
is known as the partial or incomplete or cyclic parthenogenesis now the example of incomplete parthenogenesis first is aphids aphids have many successive generation of females developed from one fertilized egg in spring and summer in late summer both sexes are formed by parthenogenesis now the female mate with males and lay fertilized egg with survive the cold winter season and hatch into males in the next of spring to continue parthenogenesis now the second example of incomplete parthenogenesis is honey bee the fertilized egg develop into females including queen bee and worker bees and the unfertilized egg of honey bee develop into the male bees now the next example of incomplete parthenogenesis is rotifers certain rotifers lays two types of eggs first is amictic eggs and second is mictic eggs amictic eggs are diploid and can't be fertilized mictic eggs are haploid if mictic eggs are not fertilized they produce males parthenogenetically and if they are fertilized they develop into female now the last example of incomplete parthenogenesis is birds all the chicks produced from unfertilized eggs are males and may be fertilized as adults now the complete or incomplete type of natural parthenogenesis may be of following two types first is haploid or henotocus parthenogenesis and second is diploid or thelotocus parthenogenesis First I would like to discuss about haploid or arhenotocus parthenogenesis in the arhenotocus parthenogenesis the haploid eggs are not fertilized by the sperms and develop into the haploid individuals only males produced by this parthenogenesis method now the example of haploid parthenogenesis insects including bees and wasps urchins and rotifers now the second types of incomplete or complete type of natural parthenogenesis is diploid or thelotocus parthenogenesis that diploid parthenogenesis the young individuals develop from the unfertilized diploid egg only females produced by this parthenogenesis method example aphids rotifers lizards and some species of wasps produce alternately a parthenogenetic generation one which develop from unfertilized egg now the diploid or thelotocus parthenogenesis may be of two types first is amniotic parthenogenesis and second is meiotic parthenogenesis first i would like to discuss about amniotic parthenogenesis sometimes during the oogenesis first meiotic or reproduction division does not occur but second meiotic division occurs as usual such eggs contain diploid number of chromosomes and develop into new individuals without the fertilization this type of parthenogenesis is known as apomictic or amniotic parthenogenesis and occurs in weevils and long horn grasshoppers now the second type of diploid or thelotocus parthenogenesis is meiotic parthenogenesis certain eggs develop by the usual process of oogenesis but at certain stage diplosis or doubling of chromosome number and production of diploid eggs occur such eggs develop into the diploid individuals and this phenomena is known as the meiotic parthenogenesis now the diplosis of the diploid thelotoki may occur by the following methods first method is by restitution and second method is by auto fertilization first i would like to discuss about the diplosis method of by auto fertilization in certain cases the oocyte divides meiotically up to the formation of ootid or ovum and secondary pollocyte the ootid and the secondary pollocyte 
unite together to form a diploid egg which develops into a new individuals for example crustacea now the second method of diplosis is by restitution in this method meiosis first lacks cytokinesis the chromosome of both the nuclei from by meiosis go over the spindle fibers of meiosis second forming a diploid ovum and diploid polar body the diploid ovum develop into a diploid individuals parthenogenetically now the second type of parthenogenesis is artificial parthenogenesis the eggs which always develop into the young individuals by the fertilization sometimes may develop parthenogenetically under certain artificial conditions this type of parthenogenesis is known as artificial parthenogenesis the artificial parthenogenesis may be induced by various chemical and physical means now first is physical means can cause artificially parthenogenesis first is the range of temperature may induce parthenogenesis in the eggs electric shock can cause parthenogenesis and uv rays can cause parthenogenesis also when the egg are pricked by the fine glass needles and development of young ones take place parthenogenetically and there are some chemical means can cause artificial parthenogenesis is chloroform hypertonic and hypotonic sea waters chlorides of calcium potassium magnesium etc and some acid such as butyric acid lactic acid oleic acid and other fatty acids and some fat solvents for example toluene alcohol benzene and acetone and urea and sucrose also now the significance of parthenogenesis the parthenogenesis serves as the means for the determination of sex in the honey bees and vespers etc the parthenogenesis supports the chromosome theory of inheritance the parthenogenesis is a most simple stable and easy process of reproduction the parthenogenesis eliminates the variation from the populations the parthenogenesis is the best way of high rate of multiplication in certain insects for example aphids the parthenogenesis causes the polyploidy in the organism the parthenogenesis encourages advantageous mutant characters the parthenogenesis checks the non adaptive combination of genes which may be caused due to the mutation due to the parthenogenesis there is no need for the organism to waste their energy in the process of mating the parthenogenesis avoid the sterility in the races thanks for watching to get more videos please subscribe my channel and like this video also thanks again